All right, at the end of the last video, we had we brought our finished LineArt EPS, I have it right here, and we dragged it into a Photoshop file that we had created that is 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. That gives us a smart object on top of a white background layer. I use this padlock tool to lock my smart object layer. And why did I do that? Well, if you ever try, I'll unlock it, if you ever try to paint or edit your smart object, it's going to give you this warning. And the worst thing you can do in this instance is say OK. Because what you want to avoid doing is rasterizing your line art. You want to always leave it as a vector so it can be scaled infinitely. So instead of getting that warning, I'm just going to lock it. And that way, I can't use it because it's, edit, it's uh, locked. It's not going to give me that rasterize option anymore. And basically, the only time I'm going to click on this is to select areas to color. So now there's the big question. If I'm going to fill this with flat color, even if they're just random colors, what's an easy way to do that? One is instead of using this full spectrum color slider, which gives us access to the millions of colors in Photoshop, I can just go to swatches and I can pick they're always making this more complicated than it needs to be. But I can pick kind of basic CMYK swatches and start with those. Those are very identifiable. Or I could do the RGB ones, which are just a little bit brighter. So what if I just pick solid magenta to start? When you pick it under swatches, you'll see that the tool changes to what's called an eyedropper tool. And I need to create a layer that is between my white background and my black line art. So this is the metaphor I use. It's going to be helpful in thinking about how to set up for digital coloring, because there's a right and a wrong way. You always want white bread on the bottom. You're making a sandwich, a digital coloring sandwich. You want like the, the whitest bleached out wonder bread on the bottom. That's your white canvas. On top of that, you put your jelly, you put your peanut butter, you put your pickles, you put your Cheetos, whatever you like in your sandwich, however many layers of color. At the top, you put a really dark German black bread, right, from Fredericksburg. So you have your black bread at the top, that is your line art layer, and you have your white bread on the bottom, and in between, this is where your flat color goes. Flat color is what makes it a sandwich. Now you've got digital coloring. Even if it's just one basic layer, you just put a piece of American cheese on a piece of white bread and then put black bread on top of it, you've got digital coloring. So I'm on a, a flat color layer. Nothing's on it yet. I'll mark that as green just so you can see how important that is. Now to fill it in, I could just use the paintbrush like a lot of you were digitally inking. And I'm going to set it to be, you know, pretty hard and maybe pretty large. And I could just start painting. But then I'm going to have a lot of cleanup to do. I could use my, my lasso, like we saw in the mentorship presentation, and very carefully lasso around what I want to fill in. I'm not going to take a lot of time to do it carefully, like that. And then say, edit, fill with my foreground color, which would be that magenta. Or there's a tool that helps speed this up. I can just go to what is underneath the eraser. The default is the gradient tool, which is a little bit fancier than we need right now. Right underneath that is the paint bucket tool. This is a standard of all kind of old digital imaging software. If I use the paint bucket, it just dumps the paint of that color where I want it. The problem is, that selection I made with the lasso doesn't quite fit exactly with my illustration, right? So how can I get a better fill? I'm going to use my vector, which is a, as clean as can be, right? And to select the different spaces I want to color, I'm going to use the magic wand tool. You'll remember that from compositing. Magic wand, you want to have a tolerance. The default is 32, that's great. 
but you want to have it on contiguous. So it's only going to be pixels that are touching. The reason the magic wand tool is perfect for this is because if you saved your vector with no whites, right, then all there is is black pixels and empty space. And the magic wand is amazing at selecting empty space, even if the layer is locked. So I can go to my locked layer, I can use my magic wand, and I can select anything that is open, right? Anything that's touching. So you see this empty space. It is selecting all of that, but because I have that little opening in my line art there, it flows up into the next thing until it's contained. Even though it's a locked layer, I can make selections from it. Then I have to move down to my flat color layer and use the, the paint bucket to drop it in. Let's choose another color. The great thing about the magic wand is if I use shift with it, I can add to the selection. So right now, I've just selected this part because that's contained. But I also want this. I want this. This ribbon is going to be you know, one flat color on that side. So now all of those sections are selected. I held down shift and I added to the selection. When you hold down shift with the magic wand, you'll get that little plus sign next to it. So you know you're adding to the selection. Now I go down to my flat color layer and I drop it in with my cyan. Paint bucket, just drop it in. There we go. All right, next, what about these letters? Well, let's use the beautiful school color of fluorescent green. I go to my vector layer, I use the magic wand, I hold down shift. And even this little spot right there, whoops, I accidentally selected on the black. So sometimes you have to zoom in. It's gonna be right at the head of the magic wand is where the selection happens. Then I go to my paint bucket, I go to my flat color layer, and if it's locked, it, it won't let you accidentally paint on the wrong layer. And I fill it in. Now, what about the, the rims around my fluorescent green? Well, why don't I use yellow for that? God, this is gonna be nauseating looking, but it's gonna help later, you'll see. So, go to my vector layer, Hold down shift. I want to get all of these. I might have to zoom in with command plus. All of these stripes around it. So I'm working in kind of families of local, local color selections. Just like a coloring book. Go to my flat color layer. Go to the paint bucket. Drop it in. And because that yellow isn't touching with other areas... I missed this one. So let me do that quick. Magic wand. The shortcut for the magic wand is W. If you, you can see shortcuts for certain tools. And the shortcut for the paint bucket is G. So if you just go between W and G, you can even just hover your, your fingers on that keyboard. It's helpful. So I'm going to do W to get the magic wand. Click here. Whoops. <laughs> Click here in that space, click G to get to the paint bucket, go to flat color and drop it in. And you see this is what we get. Okay, I can use that same one for the highlights on the helmet because that's not touching. You just don't want similar colors too close to each other. But I might want totally different colors and I'm kind of running out. So now I might go to the pastels in swatches. And this is actually based on some of those mixtures of CMYK, like early comics. So why don't I take that orange? And I'm going to use W to get to the wand. Select, hold down shift. Select the different reflections on the helmet. Maybe I'll do it uh, here as well. Maybe here, maybe here. It's easy to change later. And then I'm going to go to flat color, going to hit G, 
or the paint bucket and just drop them in. And because this is what's kind of fun, I don't need to click the paint bucket on each of those spots in general because white is surrounding all of it. But once I start filling in more color and they get isolated, I will have to use the paint bucket in each spot if I'm doing multiple selections. Okay, now I'm going to use purple. Maybe I'll use a dark purple. And I want to get some of the, the dark shapes. So how about use wand. I'm on the vector layer. Hold down shift. This kind of line here. Fill that in. You see, that one is contained, so I'll explain it. So I click here, and it didn't automatically fill it in there because this doesn't touch this, <laughs> even with the whites. There's enough blocking it, so I have to touch both. So we're building it as we go. This is a phase I call kill whitey because it's nice and memorable. And what you want by the end of the day is everything is filled in. Even what you want to be white, you fill in with white paint, right? And I'll usually use an off-white. So why don't I skip to that? I can go to my light, my pure, all these different built-in, my pales, <laughs> and I can choose a color that can always be modified later. I'm going to use this as my kind of bone white for now. I'm going to use my magic wand, select all this. I'll turn on the white background, go to my flat color, hit G, and drop that in. So that's what you want to watch for and see if that happens. So what happened there was that most of this skull is nicely contained with line art. But right there, there's a little opening. And even if there's one pixel opened up, you're not going to be able to select it with one click. So how can I fix that? It's really simple. On my flat color layer, let me undo what I just did. On my flat color layer, so you can see it clearly, right here, all I'm gonna do is take the color and use my paintbrush. I'm gonna do it at 100% hardness, pretty small. And all I'm gonna do is close it up. So let me deselect. And make a new layer on top. So often to get a, a better layer to select from, I'll duplicate my vector and then I'll rasterize it at the top. This is just for things that need to be contained. And then I'll just paint with the color I want for that area that in and then I can use the magic wand and select it and because I closed it up it will be nice and clean. Then I go to my flat color layer and I fill it in. So even if you have a, an open shape that you want to fill you can do that just by rasterizing your your line art, and then selecting from that. But make sure you always have your smart layer locked because that's going to be important for later color holds and special effects. Also, this doesn't look great, you know, having that little gap. So instead, you want to use your vector as your line art, right? Okay, other areas. What about another... Another part of the skull, maybe this and this. And maybe some of the, like the collarbone there. Maybe this bone, maybe this bone. Let's fill that in. Let's pick a different color. Go back to my pastels. You can also load custom swatches, and you can always mix from what you have. 